Hello, all my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today, let's flip some thrifts that we got from Goodwill for profit. So, the first flip that I have for you today is a basket. It's a nice, big, flat basket I got for $2 at Goodwill. So, it's not super sturdy, the bottom is very flimsy, and some of the wrapping for the handles are coming apart. So it makes it all very kind of iffy, and I would not use it to carry anything, especially carry anything heavy. It would be great for a table tray or something for the counter to put stuff on, make a little vignette to put in it. Uh, or I'm going to make this so that you can also hang this up on the wall. So I'm just cutting off the pieces of the wicker basket that are sticking up. Um, and sticking out so that uh, it's not, you know, an eyesore because it just does not look very good. Uh, so I just trimmed off all those pieces that were sticking out and loose, and hopefully I will be able to uh, stir it up later on. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take my antique wax in a pickle jar that I have or relish. Uh, and I watered it down a little bit. I want to make it a little watery so that it will go down inside of the basket. And I'm just going to brush it on and darken this up a little bit. It's kind of an orangey, it's kind of a mixture of a bunch of different colors, kind of orange and light, and I want it to be a little more uh, uniform in color and a little darker, make it look kind of more of a rich color. Uh, and warm it up a little bit. So after I get it all stained up, um, well I'm doing the bottom here, but after I get it all stained up uh, and dry-ish, mostly dry, um, and pick off evidently all some more loose pieces. It was probably uh, pieces of the rag that I used to wipe it off. But anyway, uh, at Goodwill I found also in the cloth material sheets linens section is this table uh, table mat or this place mat that is cloth with fringe on the edges all four edges and I thought it was really pretty cream color I like the other side too with the brown on it but I didn't think this was that was going to go with what I wanted to do with this so I started with placing it in the basket and having it go up the sides, I liked the fringe, just the the raggy part of the um, placemat all going up the sides. I thought it looked pretty cool. So I glued it in, made sure I tucked it into the crevices really nicely. And then I took some of my jute rope and I went uh, trying to sturdy up these handles and I'm going around and around and making it nice and tight and every few times that I go around I give it a nice bead of glue to help it kind of stick down and then I go down around in the basket so that it will help hold that uh, handle on and I think it made them a lot sturdier so I did both sides of the basket both handles and this is a greenery wreath that I got from Hobby Lobby. It was half price. Uh, it's actually supposed to go on like a plate decoration, I believe. And I believe I paid $7.50 for it, so that was half price. But I just thought it was really pretty, and I decided that I wanted to put that on this basket and decorate it up a little bit. So I'm taking some floral wire and I'm wiring. There's a little loop in the back of that um, plate or that greenery. And I'm taking the floral wire going through it and then through the uh, placemat and the basket all the way to the back and then just twisting it so that it stays on there nicely and won't fall off. And probably a nicer wreath, I mean a bow would look better on here, but I just made a regular shoestring uh, bow on here. I thought that would look really cute and trimmed up the uh, tails that were on it. And I have this 
a welcome sign that I got for a dollar again at Goodwill and any time that I can find little wooden signs I pick them up because they're easier to deal with and I attach that and this is what it looks like So I also wanted to show you it as a just a basket sitting on like a counter or a, a coffee table and just looking like a tray and decorated slightly. This project is another one from Goodwill. This was a couple dollars that I purchased recently. I just sold one in my booth and so I decided to put uh, do another one to put in there. I have a new decoupage paper that I wanted to try in that section at the top where the picture is and leave the chalkboard the way it is. So I'm painting with my folk art black paint and I'm doing around all of the outside and I just did one coat I believe it it really covered nicely so uh, that's all I had to do on that and now I'm taking some of my Waverly, oh it's an off-white chalk paint and I'm going over the background of uh, where I'm going to put the decoupage paper and just filling that all in just with one coat it doesn't need more than one and while that's drying I'm gonna tape off around my chalkboard and give it I'm gonna give it a freshening up and make it so that uh, it's easy to use. So some Rust-Oleum chalkboard paint and I do two coats. So I do a thin coat and then let it dry and then I come back when that's dry and I do another coat on top of that and let that dry and then it should work just fine. So this is the decoupage paper that I got uh, from, I got this one from Zazzle as well, Zazzle.com. And so make sure you go check them out if you're interested. They have a ton of different papers and they're very affordable. So, uh, and I have had a few people say that they don't shop online. What else can they do? You can also find prints online that you can print on your printer uh, or off your printer onto tissue paper. And I'm sure there are tutorials out there that will show you how to do that. I have not tried it that way yet. Uh, so we're going to uh, just do it this way for today. So I put in a coat of Mod Podge. And I don't know if you saw the black streaks in there. But evidently the corners still had a little bit of wet black paint in there and I didn't realize it but that's okay because the decoupage paper goes right over it and you wouldn't even know. Now as I'm putting this on because it's so thin I've got the very thin thin paper uh, I kind of ripped it a little bit and it was bothering me so I decided to fill it in with the same paper that uh, I cut off from it and just took a small piece to put it on and kind of fill in that hole. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is a primitive piece. Uh, it's supposed to look like it's been, uh, like it's old and been through a lot. So uh, just patched it up just a little bit. So I'm dry brushing just a light brush of the plaster paint, uh, Waverly plaster paint, all over the frame of this chalkboard. I thought it was too stark black and it needed something else to match the top. So I did that. Then I'm taking my antique wax rag that I had when I wiped down the previous piece and I'm taking it and wiping it over the plaster so it makes it darker and it matches the background of the chicken decoupage paper that I just put on. So I think it matches awesomely. It's not that bright white or even just a little bit of an off-white. It's a yellowy color, so it matches that background. And um, just using a little bit of the antique wax and wiping it off.
This next project is a wooden box, like a magazine rack. It's not very wide for a magazine rack, but uh, it may still be just that, I'm not sure, or maybe a paper towel holder for the bathroom. But I'm going to repurpose this, and first I'm going to give it a coat of cream color that I bought at Hobby Lobby. It's just an acrylic, cheapy paint that I wanted to try and see. It was only like $2 for a 16 ounce piece, so I thought I would give it a try. Uh, just so you know, on this dark piece, it was not fun to use. It was very thin paint and it didn't cover very well. Again, it was a dark piece and you're taking light colors to cover it, but uh, it took me two coats plus I stippled on some paint and that seemed to do the trick on it. It was missing a couple of these little wood buttons that cover up the screw holes and I had them in my in my stash. It pays to keep stuff. And so I'm just filling in those holes with those buttons, pounding them in using a little hot glue. They'll stay in there. And this is with uh, one coat of the paint. So wasn't super happy with that. But it took me a while and took a long time to do because I had to let it dry in between coats. And uh, it just didn't cover very well. Now I'm taking my Jamie Ray Vintage stencil that I have. It's a grain sack stencil. There's a pack of them that you can purchase. I believe she still sells them. I'll put a link down in the description so you can check it out. But I did one going uh, horizontally and one going vertically. I put one on all four sides and I think it came out really nice. I really like it. So now I have blessed this nest, or bless our nest, uh, mesh stencil that I believe I got from Michaels. And I'm just taking some black folk art paint and a little piece of wood and scraping that right off and down through the, the mesh so that the paint will get in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, I want it to be a little distressed so it doesn't have to be crisp because I'm going to go back in and distress it anyway if it's not distressed enough. There you go. Bless our nest. So cute. This next one is a uh, the stamp that I'm going to use on the shorter sides is a group of birds sitting on a branch. I'm just putting a little bit of paint on it and then I uh, flip it over and stamp on the paper and then I stamp it on to the wood. So it's not crisp, crisp, and it looks more distressed and aged. This little bird stamp I got from Dollar Tree. It's a little pack for $1.25 of a bunch of different birds. And I decided that the handle up top needed a couple on each side of the heart. So I'm just taking a couple of them and inking them up and doing the same ink it up and then I ink, ink it off onto the paper and then onto the wood so it's not as crisp. I'm taking a dry brush of the cream paint that I originally had put on to this piece and I'm just going over everything and just giving it a little bit of a distressed look, a little age to it and toning it down just a little bit so it's not so bright. So I just go one direction and then the other direction and then it just it makes it look more distressed without actually taking sandpaper to it. Speaking of taking sandpaper, I am just going to go around the edges and distress this up a little bit and then see how it looks after that. Now I'm giving it a quick seal to uh, with the Rust-Oleum Clear uh, Spray so that I can distress even more because I'm not happy with just using the sandpaper. So we're going to give that a spray all over and then let it dry and then I'll show you what I do next. So now I'm going to take just a little bit of watered down antique wax and I am going to put it on the brush and then brush the brush off as much as I can and just do 
uh, a light brushing over everything and then take my rag and wipe it back. So it's going to give it a little bit of a aged antique look, hence the antique wax. It's also going to seal it in on top of the spray. So I, when I spray first, I'm able to pull back a little bit so it doesn't sink down into that paint and make it hard for me to get rid of what I don't want. I don't want it too, too dark, but I also want it to be aged and distressed. So this is how it came out. So thanks for watching my friends. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite if you have one. I will put a link down in the description for any of the stencils or paints that I use today. Have a great day.